The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum invite you to enjoy life. Life with Luigi, a new comedy show created by Cy Howard and starring that celebrated actor, Mr. J. Carol Nash, with Alan Reed as Pasquale. You know, friends, Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum is a typically American product that appeals to people of all ages and nationalities in all parts of our country. And the Wrigley people feel that Life with Luigi is a typically American radio program, a friendly, enjoyable show that sort of symbolizes the American spirit of tolerance and goodwill. So the makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Gum are glad to bring you Life with Luigi each week and have you join them in this pleasant half hour's transcribed entertainment. And now let's read Luigi's letter as he writes to his Mama Vasco in Italy. Dear Mama Mia, <laughs> the American is a wonderful fellow who likes to protect himself, his family, and his property. And for this, the hills they got an insurance. It's all the kinds of an insurance to Mama Mia. It's for all the kinds of people, for officer workers, for soldiers, for sailors, and for plain people. And if a crook thinks he's not going to make enough of money, he takes out a burger insurance. <laughs> <laughs> also, they got automobile insurance, accident insurance. And if you don't have an accident, then there's a health insurance. <laughs> also, is a jewelry insurance, a foreign insurance, and the most common thing, life insurance. This is a something that makes a man a rich after he's a dead. <laughs> the reason I'm going to write to you all about this insurance, Mamma Mia, I'm had a little fire in my store, and lucky for me, I'm had a fire in insurance. But Squally is making me take this out to when I'm a first open up my antique store a year and a half ago. He's explaining to me how, without the fire insurance, if a man has got a fire, he must run to the firebox. With a fire insurance, he don't have to run, he can walk it slow. <laughs> anyway, Mamma Mia, I'm going to send a letter to the insurance company, and I guess they're going to send me a check for the antiques I'm lost in a fire. What is the time I should have gone out to my night school class, so I'm going to finish this a letter later. America, I love you. You like a papa to me. From ocean to ocean. That's all I show so far about it. Everything is all right. All right, class. Quiet, please, please. I'll call the roll. Mr. Basco? Here. Mr. Harwick? Here. Mr. Olson? Hey, Mr. Yeah. Schultz? Don't go any further. With me, you hit the chalk box. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, fellow boobers. To know me is to adore me. <laughs> All right, Mr. Schultz, you can take your finger out of the inkwell now. <laughs> now, class, our lesson for today is on geography. Who will name the continents for us? Mr. Basco? Hamadono. <laughs> Mr. Harwick? I don't know. Mr. Schultz? You know, Miss Spalding, you got smarter answers when you call the roll. <laughs> I can see, class, that none of us studied his lesson today. Well, if you didn't study, what do you expect from us? <laughs> Miss Spalding, I am sitting here quite confidently with the correct answer on the tip of my tongue. <laughs> the correct answer on the tip of my tongue. <laughs> Olsen, why don't you sneeze and bite off your brain? <laughs> Mr. Olsen, I know that you know the answer, but I'd like to get it from the rest of the class. Well, Miss Spaulding, let me attempt a try. The continents are... Well, there's Europe, Australia. That's right, go on. What about America? Yes, that's right, there's North and South. You mean I got a choice? <laughs> No, they're both continents, North America and South America. Mr. Schultz, you may continue. Oh, well, uh, there's uh, Australia. Mr. Horowitz mentioned Australia. 
Well, I'm using the return trip ticket. <laughs> Mr. Schultz, think. Now, what is the name of that very cold region? I'll give you a hint. The ant? The ant? The antifreeze? <laughs> no, Schultz. That was the Antarctica. That's very good, Mr. Olsen. Oh, what's so good? Why don't he get the answers the hard way like the rest of us? <laughs> By getting. <laughs> Schultz, I wish that you studied your lessons as hard as Mr. Olson. Yo, ho, I am always studying, even when I don't have to. Last night on the way home in the subway, I read Shakespeare. Walking to the house, I enjoyed Dickens. Going up the steps, I read a little Edgar Allan Poe. Then you opened up the door and kissed Mark Twain. <laughs> Schultz, you are just jealous of my general knowledge. All right, gentlemen, no fighting, please. Now, continuing with our lesson, we mentioned most of the continents but one. We left out one very hot region. Mr. Basco, what is that hot region? My aunt take a shop. <laughs> what? I'm a had a fire there and it was a plenty hot. <laughs> you had a fire in your store, Luigi? Yeah, but I'm not sure, so I'm going to get back my money. Oh. Ach, don't be so sure, Luigi. You know, my brother Ludwig had a friend who had a big fire in his store. He asked the insurance company for money. They sent over an investigator. But the end was, the company got suspicious and they wouldn't pay out one penny. Sure, so what made him suspicious? Oh, little thing. <laughs> In the burning building, they found 30 empty matchboxes, 10 pounds of TNT, and the phonograph was playing, there'll be a hot time in the old town tonight. <laughs> My Luigi, I'm only making a joke to cheer you up. <laughs> Mr. Schultz, you're not helping Mr. Basco with any sensible advice. You're just confusing him. Luigi, you got nothing to worry about. Uh, how did the fire start, Luigi? Yeah, what did you do? Nothing. I wanted to warm up with some supermarket and you saw my little match. Uh -huh. Spark is a jumper to the curtain. I'm going to try to put out the fire with a newspaper and the papers are going on the fire. <laughs> So I'm going to throw the pepper on the end of the ticket chairs and I was just starts to burn. Then I'm going to spill a bottle of water on the fire. But it turned out it wasn't a water in the side. It was a kerosene. <laughs> Himmel! I'm going to do the wrong shoes. Oh, no, 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 no. You did what any other normal fire bug would do. <laughs> <laughs> Mama, man, you know I'm going to do nothing wrong. Class, I'm going to write a letter telling all about this to the insurance company. You think I'm going to get into trouble? Well, it's a cinch you're only going to get in good with them. <laughs> Mr. Schultz, will you stop it? Now, Mr. Basco, you have nothing to worry about. You wrote a letter to the insurance company. Now, I would tell them what was burned and how much it cost. That's right. Then they send over the adjuster and you get your money. Yo, that's all there is to it, Louise. Oh, thank you, your friends. Then I'm going to have enough trouble, huh? Ah, who knows, Luigi? If you ask for the money, what's the worst that can happen? Will the insurance company get suspicious? Will they send over detectives to question you? Will they hound you with a million questions and call you a pyromaniac? I sure, so will they? Certainly, the company's got to have some fun for their money. <laughs> Luigi, my friend. Hello, Luigi. Hello, hello. Hello, Pasquale. <laughs> hey, Luigi, what's the matter? You look like something terrible has happened to you, like a catastrophe. <laughs> Pasquale, I'm going to have a little fire in my store, and when I'm going to ask my night school class to what I'm going to do, Miss Spalding, as you say, I'm going to sure put down what's the cost of the insurance company. Schultz is to say, I'm going to get into trouble. Horowitz is saying not to worry, and now I'm a dunno. So, she'll go to everybody for advice but your friend Pasquale and what's to happen, and nothing. All the time, you running around like a crazy little mouse looking for a piece of cheese, when all the time I'm a sitting here with my bigger trap. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're so right, the Pasquale. Is there nobody got a bigger trap than you? <laughs> That's a funny thing. When I'm a saying it to come out a different. <laughs> ah, Luigi, it's a no problem. All you gotta do is fill out a claim, a justice to come. He's investigating you, then they send you proof of lawsuit which you sign, 
Then comes the check. Pasquale, how's it coming you know so much? Simple, Luigi. Uh, I'm going to have a little fire in my store every six months. <laughs> every six months? Sure. Otherwise, how could I pay for my fire insurance policy? But a Pasquale, is it that the nice? No, oh, stop talking like a greenhorn or boom. Look, Luigi, fires can be helped sometimes. If you don't have a fire and I don't have a fire, what's going to happen to all the firemen? They got to pack up their rubber boots and their pickaxes, their checker games, and they go on a release. <laughs> and all those little red fire boxes on the corner, they're going to be used for slot machines. <laughs> now sit down, Luigi. I'll get a piece of paper and we start to make out of your claim. Oh, thank you, Pasquale. You really help it to me. Oh, don't bother to thank me now, Luigi. Thank me later after the damages are done. I mean, uh, after you report the damage. Now tell me, what was the first thing was a burn? Well, it was the colonial check cost me $12. Uh-huh, what else? Spinning a wheel, $18. Curtains, $3. That's all, Pasquale, $33 altogether. Uh, so, uh, so. uh -huh. Okay, Luigi, I'm going to finish your list. Here it is. Alexander Hamilton, the chair, $50. What? Uh, Betsy Ross is still in the wheel at $600. French Tapestry, $200. Uh, Miss Galenius, $200. Makes it a $1,050. Well, what are you doing? And that's not what other things it cost to me. Luigi, first the thing you've got to learn, when you make a claim to the insurance company, you always multiply by 72. <laughs> that's the American way. <laughs> The American way to multiply by a 72? But why? Because when the company pays off, they divide by 56. <laughs> See, this way, you outsmart them. You're ahead by 18%. <laughs> now, don't worry. Put down all this. The companies are going to offer you nothing. You compromise in between. In the end, you're still ahead of $400. Pasquale, <laughs> you sure it's a right to ask us so much money? Luigi, would I lead you wrong? Don't answer that. <laughs> now go, go, Luigi, go. As long as you sign the paper, I'm going to mail it for you. I'm going to take care of everything. All right, Pasquale. And I thank you. I'm going to know what Tama would do without to you. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right, Luigi. One a good turn. It deserves another. Go, go. Goodbye. Don't worry, little cabbage puss. <laughs> Oh, wait till the insurance company sees these are high prices. And wait till the cops arrest the hammer for perjury. <laughs> then he's going to come running to me. Pasquale, get me out of jail. Get me out of jail and I'm Mari Rosa. <laughs> what a good tale. It deserves another, eh? <laughs> By the time I'm through with him, he's going to have so many good turns, his heads are going to come off. <laughs> Before we return to Life with Luigi, I'd just like to mention the enjoyment you can get by chewing delicious Wrigley's Spearmint Gum. Whether you're indoors or outdoors, working or simply taking things easy, you can slip a stick of Wrigley's Spearmint into your mouth and you're all set for some good chewing. You see, Wrigley's Spearmint Gum has lots of lively, refreshing, real mint flavor. It not only tastes good, but it also cools your mouth and helps sweeten your breath. And the smooth, easy chewing adds enjoyment to whatever else you're doing. So treat yourself to Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum often. It's good and good for you. Now let's turn to page two of Luigi Basco's letter to his mother in Italy. And so, Mamma Mia, Pasquale is sending my claim for a thousand and a fifty dollars for the thirty-three dollars worth of antiques that it was abandoned. But a funny thing is happening. A claims man was a telephone to me before, and instead of a settling, he's a sound very angry. I'm a got a worried, so I'm a call a Pasquale, and he's a come running in. Hey, Luigi, what's the matter? Call a Pasquale, claims man is a calling me this morning. He's a said he's a come down here, and he's a sound very angry. You think you think maybe we was asking too much, man? Oh, Luigi, stop! I explained to you a dozen of times. You gotta give them a high price because before you can collect, the company likes to bargain a little. 
That's a call a collective a bargain. <laughs> But, Squally, are you sure I'm, I'm, I'm not going to get into trouble? That's impossible. Luigi, even if a worse was to come to worse, are you protected by the AFL? <laughs> <laughs> AFL? Yes, the aliens of fire losses. <laughs> <laughs> now, stop oh. being such a pessimist because Hello. I... Hello. I'm Mr. Johnson, just for the Empire Fire Insurance Company. Which one of you is Mr. Basco? Well, that's, uh, that's uh, me. Uh, Mr. Basco, will you show me the items that were burned? Right there. These are... Hmm. A likely-looking mess. Good, I'm glad you like. <laughs> mm. Now, Mr. Basco, you have this chair down for $50. Don't you think it's too high? No, it's not a high chair. <laughs> Ooh, what a dope. Uh, you see, Mr. Johnson, uh, he don't know what he's saying. He goes to school in the nighttime. He only speaks a good English in the dark. <laughs> Let me handle this, please. Just look at these items, $450, 200 200 All I notice around here is a lot of junk and a collection of oily rags all over the place. Mr. Basco, do you think it's possible the fire was started by spontaneous combustion? Who? Huh? Spontaneous combustion. Well, no, I don't even know that fella. <laughs> Oh, you've got to excuse the head, Mr. Johnson. He's only a short time in this country. Don't understand English so good. Maybe you tell me in English the questions and I interrupt to him in Italian, huh? <laughs> well, would you tell him the meaning of spontaneous combustion? Uh... <laughs> I think we'd be wasting our time because they don't eat that stuff in Italy. <laughs> Now, uh, see here, Mr. Basco, let's be honest about this. Here's the damage right before our eyes. Wouldn't you say the actual damages amount to, well, let's be fair, five dollars? Five dollars? Look here, Mr. Claims, a man. A bargain is a bargain, and when you begin to bargain from the basement, you might as well go home. Is that so? Yes, that is so. No, 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 Pasquale, Pasquale, please. Well, there's no point in my staying here. Mr. Basco, I'm going to recommend to my company that they pay you not one red cent. And what's more, I'm going to have them investigate you. Luigi, my fellow boobers. Hello, Schultz. Luigi, what's the matter? You sound like a worm that looks at its face and says, this is the end. <laughs> now, what happened to you? Pasquale is telling me to ask for more money because AF Valley is helping me multiply by 72. So inflammation of place is not come out right because I'm going to spontaneous combustion. <laughs> Oh, that scheming Pasquale, has he got you for shimmers? <laughs> What's the part of all the shows suggest the fellow is a come, and he says that he's not going to pay me nothing for the fire. But how much did you ask for this stuff? One thousand and fifty dollars. <laughs> One thousand and fifty dollars? Himmel, for that money, they could settle for the Chicago fire of 1871. <laughs> oh, you little stupid cop. Why did you listen to that Pasquale? Don't you know, whenever Pasquale gives you any advice, behind it, he's got a 250-pound ulterior motive, Rosa? <laughs> sure, sir, don't you think I'm a bit wrong with this claim? Oh, I know so, Luigi. The next time you want to have a fire, call me first. <laughs> What am I going to do with you? Sure, so what does the claim of fellas are going to do to me? Plenty. Just because it's a fire insurance company don't mean they got money to burn. Well, sure, so what am I going to do now? There's only one thing to do. Smile. Sure, sure, so you think if I'm going to go straight to the insurance company, I'm a better off? Ah, sure. Just go down to the insurance company, tell the big chief there everything that happened, and maybe he'll settle with you right on the spot. You think so, Schultz? Sure. <laughs> now smile, Luigi. Be like me, always happy, always laughing, huh? <laughs> oh, my rheumatism is killing me. <laughs> well, uh, well, here it is. Uh, Empire Fire Insurance Company. Mamma mia, I hope everything is come out all right. I'm better talk with a girl about the desk. Uh, 
Quite the enemy, mister? Yes. I'm going to get a policy here is about a fire on my head. Oh? Did you bring it with you? How am I going to bring a fire? <laughs> I mean the policy. Oh, sure, you see. On the top is my name, Luigi Basco, 21 and not the whole of the Chicago, Fort Illinois. Mm-hmm. Did you file your claim? If I'm a what? <laughs> Did you file your claim? You mean at the edges, has it got to be even? <laughs> Mr. Basco, just who did you wish to see? I'm a like it to talk with a chief who claims a fellow and tell him he should have tear up my claim at this time. And if he's a donor mind away, then maybe we're going to do business with some other fire. <laughs> Mr. Basco, why don't you go to the claims department and tell them your troubles? It's the second door to the left. Thank you. Mama me, I'm, I'm a hope I'm a donor right there. There's so many offices here. A continent, this, uh, this abustment, uh, president. Uh, hey, president. Maybe I'm uh, sure, why not? Uh, go ahead, Luigi, take a chance. In America, one man is uh, just as big as anybody else. Yes, come in. Hello. I'm a Luigi Basco, fellow who's ahead of the fire. What? Well, have a seat, Mr. Basco. All right, Mr. President. I think, uh, I think I'm made a lot of trouble for your company. I'm the one that sounded like I'm complaining. But you see, I'm had a fire and... Well, I... Mr. Basco, you really shouldn't have bothered to come down here in person. How else am I could have come down? <laughs> well, I understand your anxiety about getting compensation, but you should have no fears on that score. Empire Fire Insurance is a bona fide, reputable A1 company, and we make good on all legitimate claims. But, uh... Mr. Basco, what would you say if I told you we had as many as 10,000 fires a year? I would have said you should have been more careful. <laughs> uh, you missed the point. <laughs> Please, uh, Mr. President, I'm sending a big claim to your office. Then a fellow's to come and he's... Oh, you sent your claim in. And uh, did we send you a draft to take care of your fire? <laughs> No, it was another draft, so I'm going to put him out there with the water. What? Mr. President, believe in me, I'm going to like it to make a trouble with your company. Trouble? No, why, <laughs> Mr. Basco, Empire Fire Insurance has unlimited assets. How much money are you asking us for? How much you got? <laughs> Twenty million dollars. All right, I'm going to take it. I'm going to take, I mean, I'm going to take whatever you want to give me. <laughs> Mr. Basco, there are certain preliminary formalities which must first be taken care of before your claim is settled. But I'm... You've had your fire. You've sent in your claim. Now go home and stop worrying. You're building a big thing out of this fire. I'm not building a bigger fire, believe me. <laughs> Goodbye, Mr. Basco. <laughs> Luigi's and no doubts about it after what you just told me. The only thing could save you now is to get the best legal brains and money can buy. Mother Pasquale, you know I'm got to no money. How am I gonna do this? Thing? Well, I might be willing to help out. And Luigi, if I get you a lawyer, it won't be just a plain a regular lawyer. I gotta get you a lawyer with a license. But Pasquale, Pasquale, would he get me out from my trouble? Would he? Oh, Luigi, most of the lawyers, if they get a license to practice it before the bar. My friend has got a license to practice behind the bar. He's a bartender. <laughs> Luigi, after all, I'm a part of responsible for getting you in this trouble, so I've got to get my lawyer for you. Oh, Pasquale, you want to do this for me? Sure, little banana nose. <laughs> oh, Pasquale, you're most the wonderful man in the world. <laughs> sure. Now I'm going to do you a little favor. Maybe you're going to do me a little favor. <laughs> all right, sir. What a favor you want, Tom, I'm sure to do. Marry my daughter, Rosa. <laughs> well? Well, what Tom can I say? All right, the Pasquale. Go! That's the kind of man I like, a coward. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm going to call in and blush of the bride. Rosa! 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 You 
Yes, my little baby doll. Rosa, say hello to Luigi. Hello, <laughs> Luigi. Hello, Rosa. Rosa, is it Satan a beautiful and luscious as somebody Luigi would like to take her with a hammer to Niagara Falls? Could you guess to who? Teddy Lamar. Oh, shut up, you guys. <laughs> now, about the wedding, the children. Hello. Come on, here. That's the Clemson fellow. He's the back. Uh, Luigi, just be quiet. I'm going to handle the him. Uh, Mr. Basco, I just received a special note from the president of our company. Uh, the, the, the president? Look, please, I'm explaining. Um, uh, uh, don't mind the him, Mr. Just the hair. He's not speaking English. Oh. Well, the president has ordered me to settle his claim with satisfaction to all parties concerned. Now, Mr. Basco, let's forget what happened before. Um, how much would you take for your fire damage? I'm going to want to make a trouble. $33. What? Uh, pay him no attention, Mr. Claims. Luigi's not speaking English. Uh, come now, Mr. Bosco. It's not our intention to frighten you into any unjust settlement. How about $233? No, $33. How about $200? No. $150? No. How do you like that? They change your places. The shoes on the other foot. <laughs> Please, Mr. Claims, you're talking to me. This fellow is only a year and a half in this country. He's not thick of English. <laughs> All right, Mr. Basco, have it your way. $33. At the dishonest, the $33 is what the stuff costs, Louise. Just a minute. <laughs> who are you? I'm a Pasquale. That's who I'm. I'm, I'm a landlord of here. Well, well, Mr. Pasquale, in my investigation here, I found seven different fire violations. Uh, I'll be very happy to report these to the fire commissioner and see that you pay the fire. Uh, 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 wait a minute, sir. Uh, no, good day, gentlemen. Mr. Basco, your check will be in the mail. So, there's only one way to deal with these fire insurance companies. Never have a fire. Yeah, I guess you're right, Mr. Pasquale. Well, they're coming back at the happier things of Louise. You bother your wedding with a rose. Huh? Yes, your wedding. Luigi, what's the matter with you? Matter? Yes, you don't you understand me? No, I'm only a year and a half in this country and I'm a don't speak English. <laughs> and it's so mum for me, everything is turned out all right with a fine insurance company. Since that's to happen, I'm realizing how good is an insurance of protection. Right now, I'm took out all the kinds of insurance. I'm got accident insurance, health insurance, and a life insurance. But now I would be the happiest man in the world if only I could take out the one other kind of an insurance. Marriage insurance to protect me from a roast. <laughs> you love the son of Luigi Basco and Lily McGrath. Folks, the makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum hope you enjoyed tonight's episode of Life with Luigi, and they'd like to remind you that in the hurry and scurry of a busy day, it's a good idea to have a package of Wrigley's Spearmint Gum handy. Whenever you feel a bit tense or upset, chew a stick. Besides giving you enjoyment, sinking your teeth into a smooth piece of gum helps relieve that feeling of tension, sort of relaxing there without slowing you down. It's one reason millions of people chew gum while they work. Try it, won't you? See if chewing delicious Wrigley Spearmint gum doesn't help you feel better and work better. The makers of Wrigley Spearmint gum invite you to listen next week at the same time when Luigi Basco writes another letter to his mama Basco in Italy. Life with Luigi was transcribed and was produced and directed by Cy Howard and is written by Mac Benoff and Lou Dermott. J. Carol Mack is starred as Luigi Basco with Alan Reed as Pasquale, Hans Conrad as Schultz, Jody Gilbert as Rosa, Mary Schiff as Miss Spalding, Joe Forte as Horowitz and Ken Peters as Oak. Music is under the direction of Blood Gluster. Be sure to join Luigi Basco, the little immigrant, next Tuesday at this same time when once again CBS invites you to live life. Life with Luigi. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>